Hello and welcome to the National Oceanography Centre's Into the Blue podcast. I'm your host Will and today I'm joined by Dr John Sidon to discuss how digital twins of the ocean will transform ocean observations. Welcome John, thanks for joining me. Thank you Will. So we're going to start with a random ocean question. Uh, so today's question is, what is your favourite beach and why? Yeah, that's a challenging question. You're asking a man from Devon <laughs> what his favourite beach is. Plenty um, of options. Yeah, plenty of lovely options. So um, yeah, I, I'm from Exmouth originally and Exmouth has the most amazing two mile long beach. So for me, that's where my heart is. And I love it in the winter when the wind is really blowing, you get all the different seaweed on the beach. It's one of my, it's my go-to place. It's my happy place. Must so, be Exmouth Beach. Must be popular. It's very busy in the summer, yeah, which is <laughs> why it's imagine. nice in the winter. So, so should we start by talking a bit about what a digital twin is before we go on to digital twins of the ocean? Just a bit of background as to what is a digital twin. Yeah, so a digital twin is a, is a decision tool, basically, that allows you to take data uh, observations and turn them into something useful that a decision maker might need. So they come from the background uh, uh, of engineering. So, for example, if you're going to design a car, Traditionally, you would build a model, uh, a physical model, and you'd stick it into a wind, wind tunnel and you'd look at how it behaved and then you'd build a, a full scale model and so on. A digital twin allows you to do that um, using a, a computer model or some form of representation in the virtual world of the real thing. And it obviously makes it a lot cheaper to design things. You can play with your air drag or whatever it might be uh, if you talk about cars. And so the concept has gone from design uh, around engineering things like cars, airplanes, engines and so on to things like uh, managing um, uh, managing buildings. So for example, nowadays you get most buildings, they'll have a whole load of sensors around them telling what te temperature is, what the humidity, humidity is, and the building itself will respond to that information in a way that um, allows the building to, to sort of almost dynamically respond. So in the sense of what is a digital twin for us, it's about how do we take observations of the marine environment or, or any environment turn it into useful information that meets people's decision needs and people can then access it through easy mechanisms on the web or wherever so it's about getting better access to our ocean yeah so it's gone oceans. from like more of a product based thing to something a bit more wider in terms of an idea as such like the ocean or marine environment like so i always imagine like digital twin is like when you like you said when you're designing a car you get like you design the car on using technology and then it translates through but i guess that concept works for the ocean now and, and other things like that yeah it works for the ocean um in as much as if you have a lot of observations in the ocean and you're able to bring them together uh, it's about transforming those observations into useful information and of course we've historically done a lot of that so our ocean modeling is is is, is a precursor to a lot of what we think about as as digital twins but the difference here is that um the idea is you start off with a problem so a digital twin of the ocean might be for example i'll talk about maybe the marine protected area one we're doing in a bit but you might have a specific issue and you want to understand how to respond uh, to that issue uh, through some sort of decision making process so you have observations in the ocean you go through a process of transforming those and then you end up with something out of the other end that is useful so it incorporates all sorts of different elements not just the modeling All right so is this going back to sort of starting with the problem then so how long has this digital twins of the ocean how long has this been a concept and something that we think you know how long when was it first sort of thought as a solution or a way of, of observing the ocean yeah also oh, digital twins as an engineering engineering concept probably go back to the early part of this century um we've been doing things that look a little bit like digital twins for weather forecasting and ocean forecasting through assimilating data into models Again, similarly, probably since the 1990s, early 2000s, right. in a meaningful way. But the but the um, the actual digital twin concept is really quite new for us. So probably the last two or three years, where we're actually starting to look at combining data uh, from observations with models, with AI, and with decision tools, all in one sort of seamless package. That's yeah. much more recent, and so it's quite a novel idea for us. And we're still really trying to get to grips right. with what it really. So was there is. like was there a catalyst for for that idea, or was it something that's been sort of thought about for a long time and then technology's obviously caught up and it's able to be a thing yeah i suspect the catalyst has largely been around the fact that we've got two broadly uh different communities one on the sort of the, the science community and one on the sort of the ai and machine learning the artificial intelligence and machine learning community and it's really the machine learning community that's largely doing a lot of this digital twinning work but it's very so we're coming together in a sort of place where both machine learning and the uh, traditional modeling is kind of uh coalescing and the, and the digital twin community is 
is largely coming on that, from that uh, machine learning uh, community. So we're starting to learn from that engineering uh, right. side of so things. It's a very collaborative process. It is, yeah. And we're learning a lot from the sort of the computational uh, uh, ca- capabilities from other communities. Right. So how, how, will the digi- how is a digital twin, how digital twins the ocean, how is it made and what what is kind of the, I mean, it's, I realise it's quite a big question because there's a lot of involvement with a lot of different things, but what is the process of creating a digital twin of the ocean? Yeah, well, we're in the process of doing <laughs> one now, so I, I probably probably need to hold fire on that answer <laughs> a little bit. But but essentially what you need to do is you need to create an understanding of what the user needs as a, as a first starting point. So I can talk about the marine protected area yeah. one. So we have had lots of conversations with people in, in, in government who really want to understand how do we monitor and look after our seabeds uh, effectively without having to um, go out there with ships or t- too often or or, um, or or to do any intrusive sort of, sorts of measurements. And one of the answers there is we have uh, auto subs that can go out, these um, autonomous vehicles that can go out and take imagery data. And from that imagery data, we can use AI to understand what the biodiversity looks like, what, what sort of creatures are down there. And so we're, we're starting off with uh, the user need to understand what the, what the marine environment is like and is changing too under climate pressures and bringing in the observations to understand those problems and so we will need some uh, observations obviously we need to bring those observations in through some sort of um, uh, data management system do some transformations to those observations to turn into information and then have an interface for the users to understand what that information means for their decision making and so we're building all those things into a, a, a prototype at the moment right so what what kind of impacts is going to have on on ocean observations as a whole like maybe obviously in the future when everything is complete and stuff like that what kind of impacts are going to have on on how we look at the ocean how we find out stuff about the ocean well i really hope that what happens is because we're doing this we're having to force ourselves to be much more automated with the way we move our observations through the system because people need to be able to do that without understanding really how the whole process works. So if we do that, someone might be able to look at the imagery data we have from from a marine tech protected area, but they might also be able to look at satellite data or data off our ships without really having to have this difficult barrier of access to the data. So we're essentially reducing the barrier of access to data, which means people can use it much more effectively and make better decisions uh, on the back of that. So it could really transform actually the way the way we do we do science and also do policy. Um, more more data, more understanding about that data will come from from this process. I hope. Right. So it's going to help the ability to fight climate change as well. I'm thinking more like net zero and things like that. Yeah. So there are lots of applications we've been thinking around net zero. You can think about how you might optimize ship routing, for example, We're using oceanographic information. That's a that's a application people are talking about. Um, it should give us much better understanding of how uh, the ocean functions and therefore how it might change in the future and therefore how it affects biodiversity or these other uh, th- uh, critical societal challenges. So yes, I, I think it will be a, a fundamental part of how we do science and understanding of the ocean in the future. All right. So how, how is NOC helping to pioneer this in terms of what we're doing? Yeah. So I mentioned earlier that we're de- developing a prototype. Um, one of the fundamental challenges in doing this is understanding, uh, it's probably quite dull actually, but it's about how you understand how movement, the movement of data through a system works in a computational sense and how you how different bits of data interact with each other in a way that allows you to really understand what that interaction means. So we're experts in some of that uh, that data process and data pathway stuff. So we're working on projects to, to create standards for how you might do this in the future. Um, and then we obviously have this amazing fleet of autonomy in our ships and we have the scientists who are able to interpret the data. So bringing all those things together. Yeah. Uh, I think is where, where is where, what we're we're doing at the moment. Yeah, it's a big collaboration, isn't it, between so many different sort of areas of what NOC does, but in terms of marine research as well. Marine research, but also more broadly, so yeah. people outside the marine area as well. So there's lots lots of different people involved. Yeah. yeah. So who 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 else are we working with on this? So we're working with the um, Alan Turing Institute uh, in in trying to understand how we learn from other areas. So I'm I'm uh, co-director of an activity there where we have some people from. Uh, King's College in London who are experts in how you use digital twins for health so building a digital twin of a heart uh, we've got people mm-hmm. from uh, from Sheffield who are experts in how you do it for the built environment they've already done loads of stuff far better than we possibly could have done 
so we're trying to learn from them and also learning teaching them how we do things so we're sharing expertise across that across that sort of Turing Institute collaboration but we're also working closely with other research uh, institutes in the marine uh, in the environmental space right because the problems for air pollution essentially have fundamentally the same challenges and so we there are people building digital twins to understand air pollution and we're working with them to see if they're if, if we can right. uh, do things together and, and similarly yeah so a lot of different areas pulling in the right, same direction yep yeah so this this again is quite a big question but say five or ten years down the line what what will digital twins of the ocean look like yeah um so i so the first thing people think of when you say a digital twin is, is of, of the ocean is that you know you have one massive single twin of the whole entire ocean in every detail, uh, and I and I think there are there are projects that will do that to an extent, but I think more importantly, first of all, I think we probably won't be talking about digital twins. We'll just be using data in a much more effective way, and then there will be representations, virtual representations of the whole ocean that we can access. But those representations will allow us to pass information down to much more uh, local scale uh, representations of the ocean, which we just will be able to play with and use. And so it's a bit like um, uh, how you might use the internet to access a search engine to find stuff. You won't really think about the tool. You'll just be using it as a way of uh, getting access to your data right. uh, at all the sort of scales you might want. So you might maybe we might want data at, off the, at the waters here in the Solent. You'd naturally just go into dig in and find this system wow. and get the data out that sounds really easy almost like just available to so many people and, and i guess a much more efficient way especially considering you know climate change and things like that um but yeah that's a really exciting project um looking forward to seeing how how it pro pro progresses yeah me too but thanks for joining me today john Thank uh you. if you'd like to find out more about the digital twins of the ocean and the work knock does with it head over to our website noc.ac.uk and if you're enjoying Into the Blue, make sure to subscribe on your favorite podcast app so you don't miss out on future episodes. See you soon.